I'm going to spend my night playing Scarface for PS2. This is the worst. <laughs> Welcome to the Worst Fantasy Show. I am your host with the least, Jack Lucine, here after a myopic, a stagnant, a somewhat redundant and boring week of NFL football. But hey, we should just be grateful to have football because we all know once it hits the offseason, we will be clamoring to have football back. So let's enjoy even the bad weeks while we've got them. Uh, on today's show, obviously, hearts and farts, getting into some early waivers, not much else. So we will just get right into things. Thursday night football. <laughs> that was the heart. Uh, honestly, the first slate of NFL games, uh, all the one o'clock games, I don't think there was one that hit the over of 45 points. Uh, I, I think every almost every game hit the under in that early slate, and then it was just blowouts in the afternoon game. So not a lot of entertaining football, but there was still some positive fantasy performances, starting with Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. And then the rest of your top 10 quarterbacks, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, Brock Purdy-licious, Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Josh Allen, and Will Levis making me look stupid after I said I would not only not start him, but I would start the defense against him and bench Calvin Ridley, which I did do in my own league. Uh, and he'll show up on this list a little bit, uh, shortly, but... Yeah, I am not a Will Levis believer, so this one definitely bit me in the ass. For running backs, Bijan Robinson uh, is getting it done. Um, Chuba Hubbard continues to impress. Austin Eckler, uh, in the absence of Brian Robinson, found the end zone twice. James Conner, Jonathan Taylor, Bucky Irving, Chase Brown, Joe Mixon, James Cook, Rashad White, Tyrone Tracy. That was a my guy. Going back, if you've been watching this show uh, any bit of time, you know Tyrone Tracy was one that I was on early. Uh, Derek Henry, Alvin Kamara. CMC in his first game back had six receptions for 68 yards and managed to go over 100 scrimmage yards. So it wasn't like a, a huge monster CMC game, but for his first game back, wasn't bad at all. And Kareem Hunt. Had a really gross game, but somehow managed seven receptions. Uh, so he was uh, still viable and decent, even better in PPR. Speaking of points per reception and just wide receivers, Jamar Chase broke fantasy football this week. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Uh, put up almost double the points of any other wide receiver on this list. In fact, I think he did double every other wide receiver on this list. The number two being. Mark Plans Valdez Scantling, MVS, making his annual pop up game, had uh, 100 yards and two touchdowns. I definitely would not chase this production. Calvin Ridley, Tylen Wallace, George Pickens, Ricky Pearsall, Alec Pierce, Cortland Sutton, John Mechie, Terry McLaurin, AJ Brown, Amon Ra, Rashad Bateman, and then Marvin Harrison Jr., Drake London, Jawan Jennings, Darnell Mooney, and Josh Downs. <laughs> Downs getting it done more on a PPR level 7 for 72. A very eclectic grouping of wide receivers uh, this week. Uh, definitely not um, a who's who of names there. In fact, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the who's who are going to be in the anterior part of this list. For the tight end position, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews. The Laporta uh, supporters were happy until he sprained his AC joint. So keep an eye out. Sam Laporta uh, now dealing with a sprained AC might miss a week. Uh, and uh, otherwise, we'll have to deal with pain management to play through it. Tanner Hudson, George Kittle, uh, TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard. The Muth got a little bit loose. Uh, Trey McBride and Dalton Schultz. Uh, that was basically your top 10. Schultz barely getting in with three for 66. And on defense, we are 
Still killing it on defense. Out of these uh, top three, two were ones that I recommended for streaming defense, the Eagles and the Bills. We also had the Patriots, the Vikings, and the Cardinals. The Cardinals are the ones I have to eat. Uh, that I was definitely wrong about, and especially someone asked me on the Sunday show in particular if they should start the Arizona Cardinals, and I just wasn't feeling it. But God damn, the New York Jets look bad. Like again, on the surface and in process, it's hard to look at Garrett Wilson, Devonte Adams, Aaron Rodgers, and Brees Hall and be like, "Yeah, I'm going to play the defense against them," especially because the Cardinals' defense hasn't been like a crazy top ten unit or anything. But I was definitely wrong about that. The Cardinals' defense was a pretty good play. We don't have to belabor the point. We can just get right into the farts because this is going to take a lot longer. Come on. Don't bullshit me. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. 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 You said it's all bullshit. For the quarterback position, Jared Garf, uh, even though Jared Goff had – uh, over 200 yards and two touchdowns. He also had five interceptions. So depending on your league format, that definitely could have brought your scoring down. Uh, Daniel Jones, Joe Flacco, Sam Darnold, CJ Stroud, Kirk Cousins, Jaden Daniels, Baker Mayfield, Aaron Rodgers all had disappointing games. Mac Jones, who I had as a super flex streamer, uh, didn't really do much, but not nothing was as bad as if you tried to start Cooper Rush or Caleb Williams, both of who got negative points. And Caleb Williams in particular, I think this is not a Caleb Williams problem, though I know he's not playing well. Uh, and I look at the entire offense; the entire offense isn't playing well. And quite frankly, it's Shane Waldron. <laughs> I think it was very telling uh, how JSN reacted to Shane Waldron leaving Seattle. I think um, it's very telling how DJ Moore has been acting uh, this entire year. You know, and he's someone in particular, I get it, they're, they're slapping him with the diva wide receiver tag. But I also look at it in the sense of you escaped the Carolina Panthers thinking, it's like when you escape a bad workplace and your bosses are shitty and you finally get to a place where you're succeeding and you're you feel like your boss is all right and then – all of a sudden, there's a change in management. And, you know, the new quarterback comes in, the new coach comes in, and quite frankly, I think it's it's Waldron is wearing on this team. And just this team in general doesn't believe in Caleb Williams and uh, and the, what they're doing with this offense right now. So I, I, I don't see it getting better, but at the same time, it's hard to go away from it because they have the best fantasy schedule down the stretch. But I think I'm getting to the point where, irregardless of what the schedule might look like, this team, I don't know that they're going to be able to figure it out around Shane Waldron. For the running backs, Saquon Barkley. Uh, they just didn't need him, quite frankly. This is just one of those things. This is kind of, I guess, the concern, the validation of if Jalen Hurts, you know, runs in two touchdowns, do they need Saquon Barkley? And the answer is no. But at the same time, it's, you know, I think Saquon was also dealing with back tightness. And although he played, they maybe wanted to give him a little bit of a breather. Uh, and again, they just didn't need him. They shellacked the Dallas Cowboys pretty easily. So I'm not at all concerned about Saquon. Uh, Tony Pollard, again, he's getting all the work for his team, and uh, this just happened to be a random one where uh, they were throwing the ball more. DeAndre Swift, Rico Dowdle, J.K. Dobbins, Devin Singletary. That was another one. A couple guys asked me, especially uh, shout-out Jerry Bagshaw, uh, ardent supporter of the show, asked me if he should start Devin Singletary. And, you know, it was there. The crazy thing is it was there because he actually did end up getting you at least six fantasy points, which doesn't seem like a lot, but for a backup running back, like um, if, if they had been winning that game kind of the way that I thought that they were supposed to, then I, I do believe that they could have leaned on the run a little bit more and we could have got a little bit more out of Singletary. Uh, but it ended up just being all Tyrone Tracy. Travis Etienne, Javante Williams, Tank Bigsby, and Jordan Mason. If you tried to start him thinking CMC wasn't getting the full workload, you were wrong. 
For the wide receiver position, Khalil Shakir was disappointing. Malik Neighbors, Wondell Robinson, DeAndre Hopkins, Justin Jefferson. Any Bears wide receiver, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roman Dunes, doesn't matter. Jameson Williams uh, in his first game back from suspension. Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams. Oh, lad, McConkey. Oh, my guy, lad. He was not very good. He was very bad. Uh, Tank Dell, CD Lamb. CD Lamb is going to be a problem for the rest of the year. If you can trade CD Lamb for a still decent wide receiver, uh, if you can package him away, I would do it. Um, I don't think Cooper Rush and Trey Lance are going to be able to support a number one fancy wide receiver. I think at the at the best, he's going to he's still going to see ten to fifteen targets a game. But how good are those targets going to be? Are you going to be disappointed? Are you going to get more performances like this? I think you are. So I think I would be trying to trade out of C.D. Lamb if possible, and I would be looking at like uh, you're not going to get be able to go up, but maybe like you know Drake London is in consideration for me. George Pickens, I think, if you could get George Pickens in a piece, I I don't hate that. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough in these fantasy streets for wide receivers this year. Uh, Zay Flowers, Jordan Addison, Jalen Tolbert, Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith just does this to us. He'll ghost us um, sometimes. It just ends up being all A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. still dealing with the rib injury and now dealing with a Mac Jones issue. Xavier Worthy dropped a long pass, didn't really do anything. Parker Washington and Mason Tipton. Two kind of deeper plays that I saw bandied about in the fantasy streets that definitely didn't work out for people. And for tight end, even though technically he's on this list, uh, it's at the top of the list, so we're not going to do the Kyle Pitts segment of who scored more than Kyle Pitts this week. Uh, There weren't enough juicy names. Kyle Pitts did, in fact, have four for 55, so he's number one on the disappointment list. But it was just enough to get you, like, that's nine fantasy points in full PPR. Uh, Honestly, for a a fantasy tight end, that's not even that bad. Evan Ingram at six for 40. Taysom Hill just kind of continues to be myopic. Kate Otten, five for 35. Will Disley, five for 30. Zach Ertz, Mike Gesicki. Dalton Kincaid got injured, left the game. That's something to watch out for. Cole Komet completely irrelevant uh at this point hunter henry uh also had a bad game and jake ferguson again these are all just kind of you know middling myopic tight end performances that's like the third time i've said myopic i gotta stop saying that word uh falcons bears giants chiefs steelers commanders those are your disappointing defenses and the falcons especially they did okay but, um, you know, someone had asked me again about the Cardinals, starting the Cardinals, and I, I thought the Falcons would be a better start, and I was definitely wrong about that. So I got to eat that crow. But we're going to keep things short and sweet today. Let's just get right into the waivers. The fuck, the fuck, the fuck is in the air. The fuck, there's white shit everywhere. The fuck, I must be fucking baked, and this shit's probably fake. The fucking hell did I just take the fuck? I'm just pushing through this show. I've been dealing with a headache for like two days straight now. Um, And honestly, this waiver period is not helping any. Uh, (laughs) I'm looking at the waiver quarterbacks. We're talking about Will Levis, Mac Jones, Bryce Young, Trey Lance. Like, honestly, at this point, it's so bad that if you see uh, Anthony Richardson or Justin Fields get dropped, I would stash them in super flex leagues for the simple fact that the combined age of their quarterbacks is over 70 years old. Uh, on the running back side, Gus Bus, toot toot. He might be back. Um, might be back in the sense of he is, you know, coming back from the injury. Maybe he starts to work back into the full workload that he had. If he got dropped, you might want to pick him up and stash him. I like Emmanuel Wilson for the Green Bay Packers. Him and Trey Benson, if they're on waivers, they are low-level desperation flex options. Like cover a bye week running back two kind of kind of deal, or like 16 team, I just need a spot start kind of guys. Because they're at least seeing the field. Um, they're getting a little bit of work. 
So I like Emmanuel Wilson and Trey Benson. And then uh, Tyler Goodson is the backup to own for uh, Jonathan Taylor. I know Trey Sermon is still mixing in, but I like Goodson more, especially in the receiving game. Uh, the Speaking of backup to own, someone had asked me about Chris Rodriguez for the Commanders. It's, it's Jeremy McNichols. McNichols is the one that they're using. Again, it's kind of like that Justin Forsett journeyman, you know, hybrid receiving style running back. That's the guy I'm looking for besides Austin Eckler. When Brian Robinson is in, I don't want any of them, but I'm willing to take shots on McNichols if either B-Rob or Eckler is out. Uh, and then Audric Estime got 14 carries for the Broncos. If that trend continues, he definitely needs to be stashed and owned. Uh, for the wide receivers, John Mechie, uh, it seems like, you know, that's a little bit more of a uh, human story, I think, because John Mechie, if you're not aware, has just dealt with a lot of trials and tribulations to even make it into the NFL. So I think on a personal level, a lot of people root for him, myself included. However, he is performing, and they obviously have a gap behind Nico Collins right now. Tank Dell hasn't filled the role that I think people thought he would. Rashad Bateman, it feels like as soon as you try to depend on it, it evaporates. But every, you know, he's he's been a relatively consistent wide receiver three spot start. So I do think in deep release he should be owned. Uh, Adonai Mitchell is starting to seemingly get a little more run with the team. He's someone is uh, definitely a stash for the Colts. Mike Williams caught his first touchdown for the Steelers. He's a, a big body, very similar to George Pickens uh, style wide receiver fits right in with what we do uh, this year as far as the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. So I like him and pop Douglas and Keishon Butte, just like really deep wide receiver ads uh, for the new England Patriots. Uh, kind of PPR guys for the team. For tight end, the Muth uh, definitely is someone who uh, was probably dropped in a lot of leagues, uh, so you can maybe pick him up. Jatavian Sanders, again, just keeps on trucking. This time it was less uh, catches in uh, vol. Uh, sorry, yard catches in yards. This time it was he caught the touchdown, uh, but again, just continues to be involved in the game plan. Theo Johnson, same thing. And Will Disley, if you really need a PPR option for tight end, he is a very deep option for the Chargers. And on defense, the Nolan Saints uh, will be taking on the Cleveland Browns. I think you can take both defenses in what should be a hilarious revenge game for Jameis Winston. Uh, but also, I, I wish Dennis Allen was there because then it would actually feel more like a Dennis Allen revenge game. But the way that Derek Carr has been standing for Dennis Allen uh, since his departure, I think this still presents as a double revenge game spot. And both quarterbacks are terrible. Not terrible, but like they they both are turnover friendly, let's say. So I think you could start both defenses here. The Jets have been wholly unwatchable, but Joe Flacco has been struggling. So I do think the Jets defense might be worth a start. Same with the Colts defense, honestly. Uh, and then the Dolphins. You can pick them up tonight, too, If uh, depending on your league format. If you have a, a bench person that you can drop and you want to stash Dolphins defense going into next week, they get the woeful uh, Las Vegas Raiders who have been struggling to put up points. So I think that would be a great matchup as well. That's it for me. We're just going to do a solid 20 and out today. Uh, again, I'm just uh, a little bit under the weather. I'm hoping I will be back live for you guys on Thursday, going through all the matchups, um, uh, starts and sits, all that good stuff, and then back on Sunday again for the Sunday live questions. Uh, that one hopefully will still be at the same time, but I won't be in – uh, Quebec, I'll be in Hawkesbury, so I should I might be doing that from a different room, a different setup. So we will see. Um, but you know, uh, like I said, it's I'm trying to just make it through the fantasy. Season. Also, oh, uh, I before I forget, I have a worst interview coming out. I actually uh did manage to do one. Uh, shout out to Larry Schechter, he is the author of the history of fantasy sports. 
Uh, he reached out and um, scheduled, and so we ended up doing an interview together. That will release this week also on Wednesday, uh, the worst interview show. You can find it on YouTube and on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, same thing with this show, Worst Fantasy Show, on the same platforms. So if you guys can like and subscribe and do all the algorithmic stuff, that really helps on the back end. But until the next time, I'll catch all of you guys on the flip side. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare-chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare-chested. Somebody stop Look that out, man. Here comes